worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. He's worthy of the praise. We lift our hands to him right there. I give a glory. I feel like we need to just scream one more time. And make the devil real happy. God is like, Oh uh-huh. 
Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Wednesday, November 11, 2020, the nation paused to celebrate Veterans Day, the day that we have chosen to celebrate all of the people who have served in any branch of military service. Veterans Day is a day of reflection, it is a day of patriotism, yet this particular holiday stood in ironic contrast to the current state of a nation still dealing with the after effects of our most recent presidential election. President-elect Joe Biden is ahead by nearly four million of the popular votes. He has amassed nearly 300 electoral votes, and he is leading by thousands of votes in each of the highly contested states except one of them. Yet and still, our current president, Donald J. Trump, is refusing to accept the results of losing an election. In the most unpatriotic way, he is trying to poison the minds of his base to believe that the results of this election are fraudulent in order to wage a further divide between the two sides, Democrats and Republicans, at a time when both parties should be pledging unity and working together. Political affiliations aside, I take note of this and bring it to our attention today to make you aware that this is exactly how the enemies in your life choose to operate. They know that their fate is already sealed and that they are defeated foes, yet the enemies in our lives will continue to fight to, in order to poison our minds to accept an alternative outcome to the reality of the victory that we possess. If you have an example that you need, let me talk to you about how poverty actually operates. No matter how much money you actually have, poverty will fight against you if you're not aware of how it operates. It will poison you into believing that there are things that you must have and people that you must impress just to give the appearance of wealth. Sickness operates in much the same manner when you have endured bad reports from the doctor, the next cough that you happen to have, the next sneeze, the presence of fatigue will have you believing things about your health that are simply not true. And you can think yourself into future symptoms and sicknesses that you do not actually possess. From these examples, we should be aware that we have to stay ready for combat with the weapons of our warfare. I'm sure that you have heard about them. They are mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The context that the Apostle Paul presents in 2 Corinthians 10 really hinges on the preceding verse, verse 3, that lets us know we walk in the flesh, but we do not war after the flesh. You've got to understand that whatever you're dealing with in your life, our fight is never physical. Our fight is never political. Our fight really isn't even ever Racial. Those are battles of flesh. Our fight is spiritual. And when we war after the spirit, we will find that there are very clear paths that will lead us to victory. And this is where the text begins to demonstrate this very clearly for us. We find the context is the children of Israel are once again in a place where they have never before been. God is trying to transform this band of slaves into an independent nation. Here they are in a position where they had no water in the wilderness. They were thirsty and they wanted Moses to provide water for them as if he was not in the same exact situation as them. Well, as the leader, Moses went to God, who, as God often does, gave Moses an instruction that would ultimately change the outcome 
of their situation. God told Moses to go before the people and go, and there's going to be a rock there in Horeb. God is going to stand on the rock. I need you to strike the rock, Moses. And after Moses struck the rock, the Bible tells us that water came from the rock. It appears uh, that there is some immediacy, though, in the text because uh, the very next verse indicates to us that an enemy named Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. The name Rephidim means rest, and this is the place uh, where they have simply experienced uh, great victory in their lives, and would not you know it, people of God, after the great victory, there was a great uh, Attack. I need you to pay attention to biblical patterns because uh, they teach us important lessons. Uh, and this one seems to indicate that when you have experienced a great win in your life, you should get excited, not about what happened, but what about is going to happen because you are probably about to enter in to and attack. As soon as you've got the good news, you should expect uh, that the enemy is going to try to creep his head and bring some bad news. As soon as you pay off that bill that you've been struggling for, you should expect that the enemy is going to try to raise up and cause problems uh, somewhere else. But if you caught what I said, I said you should get excited, not about what you did, uh, but about what you are about about to go through. Why, a preacher, are you telling me get excited about an attack that is going to be pending in my life? Well, the reason is that it is a sign of the power that is literally working in you. A win followed by an attack is just a setup for, you guessed it, another win. A win followed by attack is simply just a setup for another win. But you can't get discouraged by the attack because you've got to look spiritually as we are fighting these battles. You see, sometimes what appears to be an attack is really an accelerant. If you know anything about how the proliferation of fires happen, accelerants are those things that are added to fires that cause them to spark quicker and to burn hotter. Well, the text is tailored to teach us uh, that this specific attack does uh, just that. Uh, Amalek comes to fight and Moses commissions uh, Joshua to go get some men together uh, to go out and fight out against them. Out of the book, Exodus 17, uh, chapter verses 8 through 10, uh, the Bible says Joshua got some men uh, and went out to fight against uh, Amalek. I should be shouting and dancing right here because if you understand what just happened, we have a very small miracle that happens in the text. You see, in chapter 14, Pharaoh and his army were drowned in the Red Sea. In chapter 15, we find the children of Israel taking a three-day journey away from the beach into the wilderness and complaining about the fact that they do not have any water to drink. God provides them water, and guess what they do? Start complaining about the fact they don't have any food. We pick this up in chapter 16, where God then sends them what we have described as angel food or manna from on high. Uh, by the time we get to chapter 17, they're complaining uh, about not having water again uh, when God sends Moses to uh, the rock of Horeb uh, and water comes out of the rock. Uh, they begin to be attacked by Amalek. Uh, this simply means that because uh, of the attack uh, that was designed as an accelerant, uh, they went from grumbling to rumbling in the span of one day. I hope you caught what I just said. They went from grumbling 
to rumbling and it took them just to one simple day. We don't have any record of basic training. We don't have any record of specialized skill training or any type of boot camp. But what we find is the children of Israel went from complaining, skipped all the way past training, and went directly in to battle, becoming a unit that was fit to fight and to win. I don't know about you, but I do know a little something about what happens when a new nation is formed. One of the first things you've got to decide is who is going to protect us from other nations. And in that process, you're going to have to grab some people and draft some people and train some people in the ways of physical and military combat. We don't see this happening here. All we see is them being in the wilderness one day and having an army on the next. I think I just blessed somebody because you need to understand it was not an attack. It was acceleration. That's causing you not just to become a fighter in this moment, but God is positioning you to be a winner. You're in the army now. You are ready for war now. You went from sitting on the sidelines to becoming a soldier in just one day. I feel a hashtag. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. In just one day, Moses went from being somebody who understood administration and he becomes a four or five star general. Joshua becomes his chief lieutenant and the men become an army all because of of the attack. And as Moses sent instructions to fight, he realized, I've got an assignment in this battle as well. Let me take my happy self up to the hill and begin to intercede for the people. And the Bible says he took Aaron and her with him up to the top of of the mountain. And we are told something that is quite interesting. And that is as long as Moses' hands were up, Israel prevailed. But as they begin to come down, Amalek began to prevail. So while Moses is not on the front line, uh, the assignment on his life is uh, just as significant, you could argue, uh, maybe even more so. Uh, but what we need to understand uh, is the Bible teaches us, do not be weary uh, in well-doing. Uh, well, it clues us uh, that well-doing at times will make one weary. Uh, and whenever you have to fight, uh, there will be fatigue. But this story is not a lesson concerning fighting, my brothers and sisters. This is a lesson about winning. And God released and allowed the enemy to attack so that the children of Israel would learn how to win. I'm going to talk to somebody. You're dealing with some stuff right now that you don't really feel like dealing with. But the reason why God has allowed it is because you You've got to develop some muscle memory that teaches you how to win. And as long as Moses had his hands up, winning was inevitable. The problem was that even the strongest, most fit person alive is going to experience fatigue in this specific process. So in order for them to learn how to win, they had to collectively engineer a way around 
what should naturally occur. You see, natural occurrence of fatigue in fighting simply makes sense. Fatigue is natural. It's what is supposed to, to happen. Weariness is natural. Tiredness is natural. And so they were forced to find another way outside of what natural should have occurred. To someone listening to me right now, it does not look like you will be able to sustain the victory. It does not look like you're able to carry the family. It does not look like you're able to bear the burden that is upon you. But as bleak as the circumstances are, they are specifically designed to help you find an outside way. I was thinking about subtitling this message. Sometimes you gotta find another way. Sometimes you gotta find your way past sickness. Sometimes you gotta find your way past poverty. Sometimes you gotta find another way around the physical, mental abuse that you have lived with in your life. Sometimes failure is natural. It is what is supposed to happen. But sometimes you've got to find and maneuver another way around it. And the Bible says that they found a rock and sat Moses on the rock. And instead of Moses having to become a superhuman who's able to keep his hands up up for hours. Uh, the Bible teaches us uh, that he was able to rest uh, his arms uh, on his buddies uh, and cause Israel to prevail uh, down to the setting up of the sun. Uh, I've already finished, uh, but before I go, uh, I want to prophesy to about 26 people. Uh, you're going to experience uh, a mosaic level of spiritual blessing uh, in your life. Uh, what do you mean, preacher? Uh, what I mean is uh, things are about to get easier. Uh, your burden is uh, about to get lighter. Uh, your fear is uh, about to be dissolved. Uh, and the fight that you're in uh, is about to be over. Uh, it is prophetic uh, that they are in referendum, uh, which simply means rest. Uh, and here is an enemy uh, that has come out against them, uh, simply designed uh, to disturb the rest uh, of the people of God. And while Moses is doing his job, the Bible says that they found a way around what was supposed to happen naturally. And instead of Moses having to stand with his hands in the air, sit down and enjoy the victory. Here's your hashtag. God, God is about to give me Give me some rest. Uh, I'm fighting a battle, uh, but I'm going to be able to rest uh, in the midst uh, of my problem. Uh, you are uh, about to get the win, uh, but it's going to come uh, by doing less work. Uh, you are uh, about to get the victory, uh, but it's about to come uh, without using it. Uh, all of your strength. You thought you were going to have to stand there with your shoulders tired, feeling fatigued, feeling down, feeling out, and feeling apart. But God has made a way for you to sit down, sit down, and lean on your brother. Sit down and lean lean on somebody you can lean your hands lean on your family rinse your body relax your mind and here is the real shout the outcome is going to be the same with less stress you 
need help spraying his ankle, please hit bars in the chat. Just put your request there. Please continue to pray for us as we will continue to pray for you. Thank you for your financial support. Please continue to do so. You can text the gear 77977. The keyword is Refuge Chesapeake. Or cash app, cash tag, cash symbol, Refuge C O G I C. We just believe that you are about to experience one of the greatest seasons of your life. 2020 could take you out. God is bringing rest and victory. Decree and declare over your life.